and uh, there's been a second working group for OFI called the DSDA, the Data Storage Data Access Working Group. And their uh, mission, uh, which I'm reporting on today, was to see if it makes sense to have a libfabric-like interface in the uh, kernel. And if so, is there anything that would need to be added to or taken away from libfabric to make it useful uh, as an uh, uh, interface within the kernel? So uh, in the kernel, they talk about upper layer protocols. These would be the clients. Uh, they require a, a known lower edge to write to. Um, each upper layer protocol is forced to find its own transport uh, abstraction layer. And this is a, a similar issue that we've seen in user space, where each MPI has a network abstraction layer, each parallel file system has a network abstraction layer. Uh, these are not easy to write. Uh, they can easily take eight months or more of uh, developer uh, effort. And uh, a case that uh, Stan uh, uh, pointed to was the Lustre networking layer. So Lustre is probably one of the, the along with GPFS, the largest used uh, parallel file system in HPC. Uh, LNet uh, is the networking layer for Lustre. Uh, it is a fork of the uh, Portals API from uh, Sandia. And uh, Lustre has underneath uh, a Lustre network driver for each uh, fabric. And so currently there's support for InfiniBand and iWarp, uh, Cray uh, Genie, as well as Sockets. Um, and then uh, NVMe over fabrics is a, is a new technology that will extend NVMe over the network. Um, uh, and they're working on uh, an interface for that currently. It's being defined. You have uh, other upper layer protocols like NFS over RDMA and ICER and SRP that have these same kind of issues of, of uh, having to write their own abstraction layers. And if you need to add a new interface, then how do you, how do you manage that? So to give, going back to the Lustre example, this is what it looks like today. You have uh, the O2IB LND, which uh, sits on top of uh, uh, OFED and can support iWarp, Rocky, and uh, InfiniBand. Uh, Sockets uh, is TCP uh, over Ethernet. And then the GNI is for Cray, uh, Gemini, and Aries networks. So over this last year and a half, uh, some of the conclusions that the group has come to is that a reduction in the effort to add a new interface would be uh, very desirable. Uh, multiple uh, protocols could utilize a common mid-layer. And here, uh, Stan is talking about the experience that they had with the SCSI layer. So initially, when there was an initial SCSI driver, and then when the next vendor came along, they implemented their own driver with much duplicate code, and so on and so on for each new vendor. And after a while, they got together and they pulled out the, the duplicate code into a common mid-layer so that only the, the vendor had to provide the very specific bits that their device needed. Uh, so that's what he's talking about there for a, a, a mid-layer uh, for storage fabric. Uh, the, it should be RMA device agnostic uh, in order to support CURT and future RMA devices. Uh, not all devices are QPair based. This was, uh, I, w I had a talk about this yesterday face-to-face, uh, -face, and this was not a well-defined uh, uh, point that uh, everybody agreed on. Um, and then support diverse fabrics without requiring to emulate uh, an existing fabric. So this is, uh, to allow innovation, we don't want to require that uh, everybody have uh, the exact same level, low-level uh, interface. Uh, the fabric mid layer could present a, uh, a consumer oriented uh, message transfer ex abstraction. And this is much like libfabric uh, that takes the view from the application coming down rather than from a hardware view coming up. So try to pre present uh, uh, the interfaces that the upper layer protocols want rather than having to deal with the low level uh, knobs. And then uh, support for merging uh, fabric use, use cases, again, uh, NVMe over uh, fabrics is, is the one that there's been the most interest on in this working group. Uh, uh, there's a PCI slot limitation to have them in the host, so NVMe over fabrics will allow you to access a much greater number of devices at near local speed. So there's been uh, at various uh, other workshops and conferences uh, showing that latency and bandwidth is, is very, close to having uh, as if the device was in the local box, even though it's not. Um, there's some other uh, uses that, uh, in this case, that are unique in that people that want to do uh, mirroring or replication uh, are looking at being able to support the reliable RMA. Uh, 
uh, and this is especially true if they're using uh, uh, NVDIMMs, but even for uh, PCI attached devices locally or P uh, PCI remote attached, I should say. And then RMA writes uh, must reach durability. So uh, when writing to uh, NVM that is memory controller based, for example, just writing it there from the RDMA device does not guarantee that it will actually persist. There's, uh, there's an extra operation needed to do that. And so this is a different completion semantic that we had than we have typically with just normal communication. So this is one of the few things that uh, we did spe you'll find that is different than just normal uh, 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 networking. Um, Stan wanted to make sure that uh, we all understood that we're trying to squeeze a, a square peg into a round hole. Uh, and, and let's not do that. Okay, so what are the objectives? The objectives are to have uh, uh, a mid-layer that has a uh, messaging API design that will support file systems, uh, block I.O., uh, object I.O., uh, and persistent memory. Uh, it should be fabric agnostic, uh, should support new fabrics but not require them to emulate an existing one, and it should uh, uh, support emerging fabrics uh, and allowing innovation while continuing to support existing fabrics. So it's not uh, trying to uh, replace anything, but it's allow. It's the goal is to allow addition, adding new uh, uh, fabrics as they come. So the uh, proposal is is K fabric, an abstract kernel module, uh, kernel mode. Sorry, API for storage. Uh, the API is expressed in terms of uh, message passing, message passing ap operations, uh, but not fabric device protocols. So the goal is to do a write message versus posting a send uh, work request. Uh, the fabric provider uh, does the uh, address resolution in a uh, agreed upon format uh, that's not necessarily the same for each fabric. So it, it allows flexibility in the addressing. Uh, the emerging uh, NVMe over fabric technology could benefit from a transport neutral RMA uh, enabled fabric mid layer. And again, that's probably been the biggest interest in this working group uh, uh, from multiple storage vendors. And then K-Fabric is designed in spirit around the LibFabric concepts uh, where RMA uh, would be device agnostic. Again, uh, he points back to the SCSI mid-layer uh, common code design uh, issue. And then reduce and simplify the upper layer protocols uh, so that they would, uh, where there is duplicate code, it could be uh, pulled out and uh, made common across. And then device specifics would be contained within the provider uh, modules, much like in LibFabric, uh, and try to keep those details out of the upper layer protocols. NVMe over fabrics and luster uh, LNDs are the uh, initial uh, hope where this could be useful. Um, I know for uh, a while, uh, the developers on luster would like to get out of having to maintain multiple LNDs. And then uh, uh, we believe that demand exists for a, an abstract fabric mid-layer uh, that can use RMA along with messaging. Um, this was Stan's uh, idea of what it could look like. So if uh, uh, the upper layer protocols are there on the top blue, SRP, ISER, and, and NVMe over fabrics and others, uh, Lustre uh, network drivers, uh, you know, these typically, or these are currently uh, written to K verbs. Uh, as new protocols come along, they could be written to K fabric, uh, and then the question becomes on these existing ones, you know, do they uh, get rewritten for K uh, fabric or do they just stay with K verbs and K fabric is useful for, for new projects going forward, and that's an open question. Uh, much like LibFabric, the, uh, the K fabric would have the same notion of providers that then uh, write to the devices. The intent is to have a, a sockets provider as well as verbs provider, uh, and that the verbs provider would support InfiniBand, iWarp, and iRocky uh, as it does currently. Um, the K fabric API mirrors largely the LibFabric uh, API, so the, what's above the line is what is exported to the upper layer protocols. What is below the line is what each provider has to implement, which is typically function pointers to uh, handle the various calls. And then the uh, uh, why uh, uh, do we need something else? So first of all, there's sockets. You know, reliable sockets is a byte streaming interface, and this is a poor semantic match for uh, storage. Uh, you have to maintain message markers. Um, 
If you use sockets with uh, datagrams, great, that aligns well with your messaging, but now it's unreliable. So sockets is a, a difficult choice. There's a, a SCTP, but, it, uh, but the sockets API itself, the semantic is uh, copy in, copy out. So if you're trying to do something that zero copy sockets, is just not a, a strong match. Um, and sockets doesn't scale well in time or space, so you have to pull or use something on your behalf to pull a large number of connections for progress or completion, and then memory consumption scales with the number of, of uh, connections, which is not uh, ideal either. And then kernel verbs is a, uh, a low-level uh, uh, device driver. Um, it is a complicated interface. I, I know some people here would disagree. I've, I've programmed it, I, I find it complicated. Uh, but it also specifies a wire protocol. And so uh, the intent here is to allow more flexibility on, on, uh, on transport, or on new fabrics. Um, there needs to be stronger completion semantics so that when data is written, particularly for storage, that it's written to a persistence domain. And um, uh, that doesn't exist today in verbs, although uh, Speaking with a vendor last night, they thought it could be added rather easily. Uh, Kfabric is expected to call Kverbs for the networks that it currently supports and any that add uh, support for kernel uh, verbs in the future. Uh, an RMA device agnostic fabric main layer does not exist today. Um, there's a, a strong effort within the kernel to try to reduce duplication. There's been a lot of uh, good work uh, on, on that, but uh, uh, there's an opportunity to do more. Um, the semantics desired by current emerging storage applications are not completely addressed by current APIs. So there, there is definitely a belief within the working group uh, that there is uh, an opportunity. Um, as I've mentioned before, block and object storage that don't map well to a, a message-based uh, API, or do map well to, I'm sorry, do map well to a reliable uh, message-based API that provides RMA services. Uh, Kfabric would provide reliable and unreliable. I don't know if unreliable is actually useful in a, in a storage context, but it would be uh, as an option. It does not require implicit buff buffering like Sockets does. The completion semantics uh, would be a match for the storage requirements, particularly the, the persistent completion. And then uh, Fabric endpoints could be thread safe when needed. And so that's, that's different than sockets. Currently, sockets are not. So you have to manage that uh, explicitly. Um, and then serialization can be done by the provider and not by the, the upper layer protocol. And then Kfabric provides uh, one-sided semantics enabling uh, remote memory access without CPU uh, intervention, much like Verbs does today. So this, again, going back to the original picture, this is what uh, the Lustre uh, looks like today with LNet having to have its own network abstraction layer inside. Yay, it showed today. And then this is what uh, uh, we see the future as, where Kfabric would then provide that network abstraction and LNet is just written to Kfabric. And so once that part is done, then there would not be a need uh, for them to continue to uh, add uh, new support within LNet for a new provider that would be handled by the, the Kfabric interface. And that's what I have. Any questions? I should say this code does not exist. This has been a pathfinding. Uh, the intent has been to see if there's interest from vendors uh, and storage manufacturers. Uh, so there's not something that you can download today and try. So, okay. Right. Steve. So a cautionary note on your <clears throat> So a cautionary note on uh, on the Nirvana space. Okay. <clears throat> So one of the things you need to be very careful of is when you go into kernel space, you need to have a minimum footprint because one of the problems we've had with both LNet and Lustre in general is the impact on the kernel and trying to update any of that at some locations makes it almost impossible to change it once you've got it on the machine. So the, one of the things that I would suggest that you might do as you're going through this pathfinding process is figure out a way to have A, minimal kernel impact and put as much, put what you can in your user space. Mm -hmm. And whatever you put in the kernel, test the heck out of it because there will be instances where it cannot be removed or in order to remove it, you know, 
there will be harm here. Yeah, yeah, so, right. <clears throat> and going forward, one of the things you need to do is have a plan, which was not necessarily well done in some of the original luster work, is how am I going to support this in the kernel going forward, and how am I going to make sure that if it does go into Linux kernel, someone in the Linux kernel land actually loves it and wants to own it as a child. Good points. So, uh, uh, I, I should have noted uh, early on that Kfabric is a kernel implementation that is distinct from Libfabric. So Libfabric, there are possibly kernel components to support the individual providers. That is separate from Kfabric. Um, but, but Steve brings up a good point about uh, the, the issues on working with the, the kernel. Um, we are aware of that at this point, um, but don't have solutions for it at this point. Very, very conscious of it. Hi, Scott. Uh, Tom Talpy, Microsoft again. Um, you mentioned persistent memory, near and dear to my heart. You mentioned that to get that guarantee of, of durability, another operation was required. Um, do you view that as an existing operation or an extended operation? I'm kind of leading into a discussion here, but. Do I view the well? I'm I'm curious if you if your intention is to support durability with the existing protocols and the existing implementations, or is it a desire to, uh, you know, take a direct leap into the future to support that kind of thing? So I'm I'm not sure I fully understand the question. So well, the, let me let me be more specific. Okay. Some have said all you all you have to do is argue may read the last byte, which in fact works on traditional platforms but doesn't work on current platforms. Okay. Or you can interrupt the remote processor and have him do the durability. That adds a lot of latency, a lot of overhead. It removes your one-sided operation. Right. So are those things that you've thought about in the DSDA uh, environment, or are those things that you're explicitly not trying to to? Go? No. So we we have discussed that and. And we've discussed actually those those two uh, different mechanisms. The idea is that semantically, you would want to say this RDMA or this RMA write needs to. It's not just to a memory location, but it's to a memory location that needs something else done, right? And so the question of how that's done would be left to the provider. It could be if a vendor had a NIC that could invoke a a, a CPU instruction, you know, that would ensure this persistence. That's one way of doing it. If a network vendor didn't do that, then you would need maybe a round trip and then an internal message to trigger that. So well, I think you need a round trip anyway. It's just whether it's an upper layer round trip or a lower layer round trip. Right, yeah. right. And, and, and so we have discussed those options. Again, at this point, it's, it's what would we need? What do we need that's different than user space? In user space, there's not necessarily a notion of an RDMA write becoming persistent. But for storage, Absolutely. that's clearly. But if you had a storage, I, I take that back. Uh, if you were writing um, from Ceph, which is a user space, if you're using not Ceph but Rados, which is a user space, then you'd want that same kind of capability in LibFabric, right? Yeah, so the, absolutely. The, yeah. Okay, interesting. Thanks. Yep. Okay. Any other questions? So, so. Can you repeat the question? The, the question is: There's no conclusion as far as to Tom's question. Yeah. No, there's no conclusion yet. It, there, there's multiple ways to do it, and 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 I think you don't want to specify a single way to do it, so that you give the the, the implementers flexibility to implement it however it makes sense for their hardware. But the idea, can it be done? I believe the answer is yes. So something you said, Tom, that very, well, bothers me just a tiny bit. You said a, another round trip is required. That's true in existing fabrics where the response that comes back over the wire just says that the data arrived at the other end, not just that it went somewhere. But if you were clever and came along with a new fabric and a new fabric protocol where you deferred that acknowledge until the data was actually in the persistence domain, you can avoid that second round trip. But it requires being able to build a network that actually knows how to do that. So the way we deal with that is, as, as uh, Scott pointed out, you can implement that, you can mimic that at the provider layer. Um, for example, the provider on the requester side simply defers notifying its consumer that the data has been written until it's done something to guarantee that it's in the persistence domain. So there's options, I guess, is the point I'm trying to make. So I, I agree, Paul. 
Um, there are lots of ways to optimize that, that reply, but a reply is still needed. You can't have a sort of fire and forget to durability no, model. No, it's definitely a, a definitely right. reliable protocol. Right, so you can, you can merge the ACK, you can send the ACK at a later time, you can do all kinds of clever things, but there's still you know, a round trip. So right. that, that I believe we agree on that fundamental fact. Okay. Well, I, yeah. I would hope if it's just an RMA write, you would still want an ACK that it completed and not ignoring those either, so. Well, yeah, you absolutely want an ACK. I right. mean, unfortunately, the transports today give you a transport level ACK. Right. But the, the packet may have arrived. It doesn't tell you that the packet was sent on the PCI bus, nor that it's reached durability. Right. So those guarantees are where we're sort of exploring today, yes. right? We're reaching yes. for solutions there today. Yep. Right, and the point is that, that both KFabric and, and uh, Libfabric, for that matter, anticipate that as a potential. So they don't right. say, That's good. You know, it's just to the end of the wire. They, they anticipate the idea that we may want to be able to delay the acknowledge until the rights actually happen. So, yeah, we're on the same yeah. page, I think. Uh, yeah. I hope so. I mean, I don't want to. Uh, th 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 making it explicit, I believe, has some real advantages in itself. Um, rather than making it sort of the side effect of another acknowledgement that happens to arrive. But, anyway. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you.